welcome back to another reaction absolutely of a baby rain dear i'm ready to jump right into this the last episode was uh crazy and you know i do forget that this show is kind of based on something factual i believe that the writer or the person who created this show the main character of this show said that he took it from actual events but i think he embellished on it or stretched it out to make it a little bit more dramatic i believe once again don't quote me i believe that's what i read somewhere when i was scrolling through my Facebook timeline and I got onto the show. That's actually how I discovered what th about this show is through my Facebook timeline. So um, I was like, wait, what's this? So I read it. And honestly, to tell you the truth, because I watch so many shows and also sometimes I get really wrapped into this that I kind of forget this kind of, this happened to somebody, right? So this is the episode that people talk about. See, uh, also a lot of people when they watch reaction channels, since they already seen the entirety of the show, majority of people when they rock, watch reaction channels um, will watch a reaction for a particular show or movie. They've seen it already, but the reactor themselves has never seen it. So we go through every episode and we just say how we feel, right? We go through, we tell you if we like the show, don't like the show, how we're feeling, why we feel that way. Um, maybe they'll get into the nitty gritty if they're like real deep reactors, shout out to them. Um, so I saw whatever episode, episode two and I gave my initial thought and, um, a lot of people when they were watching my reaction of episode three, um, they already knew about the history and the rest of the show. So they took my comments of what I said in episode, about episode two and they got, some people got a little bit upset about it. So I apologize for that. But please remember, oh, you know, I should have, <laughs> here I go battling myself. Um, please remember, like, sometimes it's harder or it's just my initial reaction of whatever episode I'm watching. But I, as I said, I don't know the rest of the story. I don't know why a character has done a certain thing because, as I said, I didn't watch it. But because other people have watched it, they understand the story, and that's where sometimes a disconnect or a disagreement of a reactor or a person may differ. I also believe very strongly in everybody has their own opinions. So um, those, some people might not like my opinion, and I'm completely cool with it. Because um, I don't like a lot of people's opinions. So <laughs> there's that. That's what makes the world. But thank you guys so much for being here. It really is amazing. And once again, I'm all about like, comment down below and let me know how you feel because I love to read it. And that's literally why I have a reaction channel. So thank you once again for being here. You want to see this in a full reaction. I promise you the links are down below. Click those links and join the extended family today. Now, without further ado, let's jump into Baby Reindeer and find out exactly what this show has got to give. Six months. I help you? I should have started with Terry, how Martha attacked her just yesterday. Would you like to report? I should have mentioned the grope on the canal, but I didn't. I'm getting stalked. By a man or a woman? A woman. When the policeman asked... Why did it take you so long to report it? Huh. All just came flooding back. Five years earlier, I went to the Edinburgh Festival. It was always an ambition of mine to take a show there. But I had to come here one day and take a chance myself. Writing, acting, comedy, whatever it took. As I arrived at my venue on the outskirts of town, I noticed the grubby windows, the sticky floors. It felt like everything to me. We know where to go for the comedy. Performer or punter? Performer. Do you mean like a different door or...? Plug it in in the corner, shove the table to the side. Did the television stay on? We mute. Do they even want to see comedy? There's only one way to find out. I'm gonna go behind that little wall there and change and when I shout out you all go mad and welcome me to the stage Please welcome to the stage Donny Don <laughs> Oh my god everybody's like what? It's funny opening a show like that when my mum has just died, no? Antithesis? Those were just awful most days I had to cancel due to nobody turning up. No, 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 no please. I need that for the rest of the month. I was about a week in and I felt like the dregs of show business. Big cock. 
Nothing. No, really, okay. I questioned if I packed up and went home whether anyone would notice. I'm going to be standing by the door with a bucket for your donations. Thanks for coming. What was yesterday? A button and a condom. Oh. Uh. Sure, if you want it. I know how much you artists love to schmooze. We have people on first bar. Tin can soldiers. We shot that on a beach in Lancaster using tin foil from catering. Did you, did you work on Cotton Mouth? Yeah. Oh my God, I fucking love that show. Look, I'm doing this show up at the Hoppy Bar. Come down and see it if you can. Uh, so you guys seen anything decent? See you later. Yeah. Oops. Terrible first impression on my part, though. Shocking. You'll never work in the industry again. You wrote Cotton Mouth. It's fucking amazing. Have you seen it? Bits and bobs, not my thing. Anyway, the actors made that show, if you ask me. Couldn't agree more. Man. I'm a comedian when they laugh, a performance artist when they don't. Darian O'Connor. As in? Cotton Mouth. God, I'm so sorry. All that actor stuff, that was merely banter. I knew who you were. Why would you do a show that you don't like? I'm a televisual prostitute. Man who puts the lol in propranolol. We'll probably cut that bit. Donny! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! So my mum died today. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thanks. You? <laughs> oh, wow. Great. Thank you. Oh, cool. Thanks for coming. Jesus, a 20. Well, I didn't get a goodbye last night, so I thought I'd come get it now. Let's meet and talk. Might have a few pointers how to take this show to the next level. I'm involved in the show for the next few weeks. Shoulders back. Giving me advice on bits that were and weren't working. Soon the televisions were shut off and the chairs faced the right way. Shows just flourished. Ladies and wow. gentlemen, please welcome to the stage. <laughs> so my mum died today. <laughs> Every night I would go out with Darian and live life like a celebrity in the main private members bar in town. Darian was like no one I'd ever met before. A self-prescribed Buddhist. In two weeks of knowing him, he'd open my eyes to the kind of excitement I didn't even know existed, gliding on the winds of change. Like this man was dangling some keys to a secret club. They patrol the toilets. Oh. Uh, uh, to get you writing scripts with me. Yeah, I mean, that would be amazing, yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready for anything. <coughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> But all good things come to an end. Hey, if you think that's bad, I was so drunk I ended up putting the hairnet on my penis. Darian went back to London early and I didn't hear from him for the rest of the festival. Fires got binned and the posters came down. The televisions came back on and the football started to play. Fear like fire flowing through your veins. I went to acting school in Oxford. I remember when I got in, I almost broke down crying with happiness. And as I pranced around in a leotard pretending to be fire, doing anything other than fucking acting, I felt one of those impossible to articulate feelings. I missed Darian. I missed the confidence he gave me. I felt like a nobody again. Like I was shrinking from the world just as I developed a taste for it. Coming? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta take this. Are you serious? You want me to write with you? I mean, yes, mate. A thousand yeses. <laughs> Oh, he's happy again. Wow. Donnie Braska. Wow. Looks like a nice place. This place is amazing. That's what I said. Okay, so Top I've actually tea. written up a few scenes and stuff. 60 pages? Yeah, didn't take long. Flying lawyer who decides at the age of 50 to try his hand at professional wrestling. Watch his wrestling anymore, he's above the age of six. Me. Yeah. He is struggling to keep the balance between his two worlds. Live his life as a lawyer. Or Hangman Harry. Hangman Harry is his wrestling name. <laughs> He's more work. I mean, I, I could sit in a, another room and try Do and... you want to get high? We can go out and grab a drink later. Be like Edinburgh all over again. Comedy legends. What are they like? Average. No, you can't mean that. They're amazing. My home's a sacred space. Take someone very special to be allowed in. They'd be leaders, gurus, spiritually awake. Either that or me around each place. Vase, Sasha Baron Cohen, Julia Davis, Coogan or Pryor. Do you want to get really high? Fuck yeah. No, like, really high. Like, what did they all do to get where they are today? Listen to me. <laughs> this is the bomb of MDMA. A what? And this is GHB. I would not be just doing these type of things. Fucking hell, that's disgusting. The first time I came up was like nothing I'd ever experienced. And on that couch, Darren spoke about my talents in the same vein as all my comedy heroes growing up. I started to believe it, smell it, taste it even. 
that my dreams were quantifiable. You don't mind, do you? Mm. That's so scary. What's wrong? Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Oh, he's <laughs> youth. Stop! Oh, my God. Well, I'm gonna not do. Really sorry about that. It's okay. We'll go slow next time. I would love to pretend that's as far as it went. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Look, I, I'm about to go into class, so if the, the channel have Hangman Harry, well, holy shit, they love it. <laughs> no, sure, yeah, I'll come. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, wow, that's great. Beamed from ear to ear as he spoke of series commissions and option periods, that by the time he cracked out the drugs, I said yes without hesitation. I thought I'd blown it, you know. Take a lot more than vomit for me to be put off of your talents. Just keep dreaming. That's After I crazy. moved to London with Keeley, I started taking drugs at Darian's house almost every weekend, believing that success was right around the corner. That I would have my own show by 30, long benders high on crack. Just that, don't be scared. And meh. Book of the future and fame feel almost as real as the chemicals that flow through your body. It's only a matter of time now, surely. I passed out many times in his company hands and mouth in various places as he searched around my body. Then I would stumble to the bathroom and find his putrid spit congealed around my genital area. Me brutal script notes and making me do overnight rewrites on a come down for no money. You're not spending my birthday with me. No, I'm going around Darren's. I told you this. What the hell, Donnie? He's helped me with my career, yeah? But what's he done? I mean, you've worked in a bar since you came to London. That night, Darren presented me with acid. I'll take half of one. You take one and a half. This guy has every drug in the world because to let the music take you where it wants to. And that's the music you play? Oh. Ah! Me, mid-twenty, sitting high as a kite, watching this 55-year-old man. Keep telling me what you're seeing. So I'm a phoenix right now. Is that what you're seeing? You see me as something strong, a phoenix. Night. Suddenly, seemingly from nowhere, this clear, strong thought entered my head. This man is bad. This situation is bad. Get out. Now. It's Reaper. We can't see. We can't fucking see. Uh, I'd reared his head to shine the most obvious light on a fucked up situation. What's happening to you? That must be so scary. And it'll help take the edge off. Oh I'm my god. god. Oh. No. Oh. no, try to keep it in. Swallow. Let's this guy could have ah. died. Ah. That was strong. That was strong. I'm getting anxiety watching this. It's okay. This is part of it. It's all part of it. Relax. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. And he's too drugged. He can't do nothing. That's horrible. <gasps> Is he raping him? You should shower. Wash and warm water will do you good. You have to shower curtain? to say I left. Then I stormed out and never went back, but I stayed for days afterwards. On Tuesday, I fed his cat while he took phone calls. On Wednesday, I finally went home. Hey, what's wrong? Not nothing, I just feel bad for how we left things, you know? What bothered me most was the not knowing. What happened all those moments I passed out? And what was he getting from it? Was it simply a desire to corrupt? Do you want to watch something instead? I'm, I'm not feeling it. No, shut up. Or maybe I just need to take a break from it all then, okay? Oh, a break from sex or from me? After Keeley moved out, I fell to pieces. I started to feel this overwhelming sexual confusion crashing through my body. I could never tell whether these feelings were because of him or whether they always existed. Go down the street and feel like everyone who looked at me could see what I was going through. I would dream of killing him. So after months of hate and anger and confusion, I was left with no choice. Orgasm quickly. In such a way that there was no denying my desires were shifted. Felt like I was going through puberty all over again. 
tried having reckless sex with people of all genders in this desperate pursuit of the truth. If I'm passed around like a whore, then I might at least shed this idea that my body is part of me somehow. It's happened a ton of times now, so what does it matter? It mattered because this is what he wanted. This is what he saw in me all along. Surrounded by pills and a misogynist so heteronormative, I could do nothing but crave their approval. Eight some relationships by the dozen. All of which started off in the gutter of what happened. You're in Mallorca and they come round and they ask you if you want to do acroaerobics. I'm just going to nip to the bathroom, all right? I'll, I'll be right back, yeah. You can do a 360 screech around the plate. A lot of people, they've gone back to shooting film now. Until I met. Now I spend my time. You're cuter in person than you are online. <laughs> I mean, she was everything I wanted. Everything I needed. But with every handhold or lingering stare came a crushing sense of anger and shame that I couldn't hide in anonymity anymore. Just don't tell Tony. That I might not feel this way if he hadn't done what he did. Mm. When Martha turned up, all that confusion faded to the darkest pockets of my insecurity and turned them to light. They should tax you for it. Man tax. Martha saw me the way I wanted to be seen. Couldn't stand the irony of reporting her, but not him. Whereas he was a pernicious, manipulative, groomer. I hadn't admitted him to anyone yet. Mm. So when the policeman asked, I don't know. Look for her emails, and when you find something of significance, come back. And with that, I was back to square one. one is to oh, wow. Well, well, that was a very, very sad episode and disturbing. Um, so now I understand why he was the way the way he's been i honestly took it as like i was like what is wrong with this guy like da, 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 da. you know that saying don't judge a book by its cover i always say that and sometimes i don't listen to my own advice but i always say don't judge a book don't judge a book by its cover until you open it up and read inside because you never know what the introduction says or what the cover says might not be what is inside thoroughly with every chapter you see i expanded on that little saying um and that's true for this man it's true for like almost everything in life and sometimes i think like probably a lot of us go into everyday life and forget that saying or don't even know that saying so we don't apply it to our everyday situations but if we do we probably would understand each other or at least give each other a little bit more leeway um in just life because i'm telling you uh, especially in today's age there's so much hatred there's so much rage everybody always wants to say something everybody always got an opinion everybody always wants to uh, fight another person everybody always takes some something that somebody says and twists it and turns it into something else everybody always is doing everything you know but if we take a moment and say i wonder why that person is like that i wonder why the person has done that and this doesn't apply for like i shouldn't say everything because sometimes it's just black and white that's how i feel um um, but why did that person say that? Or why did that person feel that? If we literally take it with every uh, situation, I feel like we'd be just better off. Now, um, there has been situations in my life um, that I've dealt with. A lot of people don't, friends, very close friends, family, know situations that pertain to me and to other people that I'm very close with. So sexual assault, Verbal abuse, physical abuse, um, I unfortunately know hand in hand with. And this is me being blunt with my subscribers and my viewers. Um, so I might go, a lot of people, when they start understanding my story, as just like I try to understand other people's, this, I feel like a lot of us have these dark stories that either has made us or broke us at one point. Um, for me, I went from situations when I was younger and growing up with this anger where it led to drinking and to drugs. My family, uh, you could you could ask my family. My family always was wondering if I was gonna make it to the age of 21 because I was literally out of control. Um, and I was out of control because of other situations that happened into my earlier years. The, I have said it once, I have said it twice. My change in life, the reason why I started to change for the better was because my sister was following in my 
path because we, me and her were always very close. But my path, and it wasn't a good path, it was very, very dark. Um, and she was following me upon there. So I did what I tried to do the best way I can with the help of family and friends, good friends, um, and changed my life. Finally, at the age of, when did I start getting really good? Late 20s, <laughs> it took me a while. Um, but finally, I got there. So, um, and trust me, my mom tried to get me into therapy, the whole nine yards. So, you know, a lot of people, as I said, something like this, we can relate to. Something like this, for a lot of people, it really is an emotional moment. Um, and I will be, I've been open on my other platform, I'll be open here, um, as well as dealing with other things when I was younger, then I got in a relationship that was very, well, it wasn't bad in the beginning. <laughs> Let's, I'm not gonna say it was bad all the time, but I was in a relationship at the end, it got very physical and very abusive to the point where I ended up not wanting to be around and I was put in a, a, a holding area to make sure I would make it and thank God my aunt who passed uh, was there for me. The rest of my family, but my aunt stayed with me and visited me and stuff. So there's a lot of, I could get deep, deep and we can have a therapy session, um, but from a reactor to you guys, if you have experienced something that has been traumatic with you, something like this or something even different, but it's still traumatic, I understand you, I hear you, but what does not kill you makes you stronger. Every day above ground is a good day. So please remember those words um, because it's powerful, it's meaningful, and I mean it. Um, so this episode, which is extremely dark, but shows you why this character is the way he is, now I understand. Um, and you, you sometimes you need, need stuff like this to understand. Um, but that guy, I wonder if he's ever arrested. And I'm, sh I'm sure this is part of the story where it's true. And there's somebody out there, like so many people who have done this to others. You know, I actually wanted to move to LA, right? And I wanted to move to LA because I want, I'm an actor. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Kick the door open. Um, I'm an actor, so I'm, a, I'm a, a, a thriving actor, and I wanted to go to LA. And my family, my aunt who passed away, she said, "Don't, don't go and jump into something because stuff like this." She said, "Just like this, it happens. Be careful." And seeing this man go through this just because he wanted to follow a dream and he believed in somebody else who was using him, abusing him, drugging him to get his what he wanted and not give what that man wanted. He was, it was all a game, all tr a trick. And then what they do is they, bro they broke him down, what he broke him down and to the point where he needed him. He needed that feeling. Um, of fulfillment, and as you see, he was just using him and abusing him. That's extremely sad. I kind of wonder what happened with that. I guess, like you said, he just never went back. Um, but I wonder if that person ever got arrested for that, because that's crazy. And then you see what broke down with his relationship with his girlfriend, and then his girlfriend left him, but then he found happiness in Terry. And then with Martha, it's very simple. Some things that that guy did, Darian, he did what Martha was doing, being in the audience, laughing, giving him that uh, courage to do things. Um, so it's very similar. And he kind of fell back into it. And it's crazy that after, it seems like after he had that, he was, you know, the R word. Don't want to say that on YouTube. But the R word, after he was R word, um, then he started hooking up with guys, girls. He just wanted to feel some sense of belonging. Uh, so, and then all those drugs, oh my God. Like you did all those drugs and you did not die. That's a saving grace. Cause child, he hit every freaking thing. And that alcohol, that liquor drink, it kind of reminds me of when I was on Long Island. I never did that, but when I lived on Long Island, there was this one guy who I won't mention his name, but he's still around. So hopefully he's not doing it anymore. But um, he used to have this liquor bottle. I think it was called, was it called? 
some moon, moonshine? What's it called moonshine? It was really strong. I think it's illegal in the United States. And the people at the parties would drink that crap and you would lose it. I actually did take a shot of it, but I never like, I got really messed up, but I never like hallucinated, which everybody else did. And then they did other things on top of it. So I'm very familiar with like a liquor, like a liquid that would take you to another realm. Um, it's just really scary. You have to be freaking careful. So now that we know what happened with um, our main character, which Donnie, Donnie, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen more with Martha, Donnie. He went to the police. You guys did let me know that um, in the comment section that the police in the UK dealing with stalkers is apparently really bad. Um, like they, they don't really act on it. I feel like in America, like we would have emergency restraining orders, which you can get at police stations. And then you would go to court to get the extension of the restraining order. And something like this, they would take right away. Also, you can get barred from any establishment, any trespass, you could be trespassed right away. And she would have been trespassed very easily. So in that realm in the United States, at least we got one thing going for us. Um, but that doesn't even stop stalkers or creepy crawlers from Creepyville. So um, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen more with this story. I'm here for it. Um, and now the understanding is here. We're all on the same page. Um, and I had to get to this episode to understand. So for those other people that watch other reactions, if a reactor doesn't really understand the character, don't come for the next, y'all. Don't bring out the pork, the, the, the porks. Don't, don't bring that out either. Don't bring out the forks or the knives on them. Wait till them get to this episode. They have to understand the character. They have to know more of the character and it, ha it only will happen with this episode. So moving forward, then I feel like the reactors or people in just general, even if you watch it with your friends or family, they have to get there. They have to understand it. Um, but thank you guys so much for being here. It is an experience. This was a very tough, tough episode to watch. Um, but we made it through, y'all. And now we're going to continue up. How many more episodes? Three more episodes we got to go. <laughs> I have huge lips. Sorry, ADD is real, and I actually do have it. I'm not one of those people that say, I have ADD. No, I really have ADD. And I'm telling you, I have the biggest lips in the world. I, we're about to get light real quick. I have the biggest lips on the world, honey. You throw me into the ocean, I will, I swear to God, I will float. You just, these big old lips. So sometimes when I talk too much and I'm filming myself, I'm like, oh my God, here we go. Because my lips start getting all chappy and it's just huge. If you have big lips, you understand what I'm going through. It's just this weird, uncomfortable feeling. And so I'm doing this and when I edit, I'm always watching me go put my hands over my mouth and I'm like, what's wrong with me? Yeah, that's right, big lips. Anyways, in case you wanted to understand how I feel with big lips, you guys now know Heidi Ho went slow. With that being said, I'll see you all next time with more reactions. Bye.